Hi everyone, it's Karen again. Uh, we're going to talk about subordination in this presentation. Uh, this is for a class given at the University of Utah about Intro to English Grammar. And um, again, my name's Karen. And we're going to cover two things today. Uh, we're going to talk about the relationship that we have with clauses and what makes a subordination type relationship with clauses. And then we're going to talk about the prescriptive rules uh, involved both with punctuation um, and some other prescriptive rules. Okay, so first of all, subordination um, is something that happens when we have two clauses and the clauses sort of have different status. So uh, if you remember that a clause has to have both a subject and a verb, so each of these clauses has a subject and a verb, um, but one of the clauses is more, um, is more, well, it's able to stand by itself, let's say it that way. So we have an independent clause that's able to stand by itself and a dependent clause that can't stand alone in its current state with the subordinator. So here's an example. When the clown arrived, the children sque squealed with joy. So we can use the independent clause, the children squealed with joy, all by itself. But we can't say all by itself when the clown arrived. That's an incomplete sentence. So we need to have the two together uh, when, in this case, is the subordinator. So we have two clauses and one of them has um, the subordinator with it and the other one is the independent clause that doesn't have the subordinator. Okay, uh, so subordinate clauses can stand on their own as complete sentences and they contain a special word that indicates their relationship. So when we're looking for this type of clause, we can find it with the subordinator. Okay, we have seen this before in the presentations for this course. Um, when we talked about relative clauses and relative pronouns. Okay, so uh, you remember that relative clauses modify nouns like this. So the burglar who stole my wallet also took my pocket change. Okay, the who stole my wallet is a dependent clause and can't stand by itself. Okay, but it's joined together with the other clause with the relative pronoun who. Okay, and it's a subordinator as well. So as we pull that subordinator there, then we're able to join these two clauses together. Okay, so we've already seen that before with relative clauses. Um, our last presentation, our final presentation, will be about restrictive and non-restrictive relative clauses. Um, so that's part 25 uh, coming up. So we'll come back to subordinators with relative clauses in a minute. Okay, so subordination with adverb clauses. Um, adverb clauses are one type of subordinate clause. So they're adverb clauses because they modify clauses like adverbs can. Okay, so the relative clauses, those are um, modifying nouns. Uh, they're more like an adjective clause. This one's more like an adverb clause because it's modifying clauses. Okay, here are some examples. So when the clown arrived, the children squealed with joy. She left because she was angry. He'll go wherever life takes him. We stayed, although we should have left. Okay, the one uh, in the brackets with the subordinator, that's the dependent clause that uh, we join with the independent clause. Okay, these are also called complex sentences. The subordinators are called subordinating conjunctions. We learned about coordinating conjunctions in a different presentation that makes compound sentences. Now we're gonna talk about subordinating conjunctions which make complex sentences. Okay, here's a list of some of the uh, coordinators or some of the subordinators in English. I'm sorry. So here's a list of some of the subordinators in English. Okay, so when you see one of those, that's a clue to us that we're looking at um, probably a complex sentence. Okay, so if you're looking at these, I want you to take a look and say, okay, what are the adverbial clauses here? Well, we're really looking for the dependent clause, and so we're looking for a subordinator. Okay, so in the first one, since you have the time, you can proofread my paper. The um, adverb clause is since you have the time. The second one, we stopped to eat because we were hungry. Because we were hungry, can't stand by itself. It's a dependent clause with the subordinator because. Okay, after the storm had passed, we surveyed the damage. Um, after the storm had passed is the dependent clause. After is the subordinator. I haven't stopped thinking about you since you left. Um, since you left is our dependent clause there. All my children, since they are grown, support themselves now. Since they are grown um, is this clause that can't stand on its own and has the subordinator. Okay, so how do we punctu punctuate these? Well, um, there are some rules depending on the order of the clauses in the sentence, okay? So if the adverb clause comes first, then the adverb clause is followed by a comma. 
So like this one, although he is competent, comma, he never finishes a job. If the adverb clause comes se second, then we don't use a comma. Okay, we waited until the parade passed through the town. Okay, until the parade passed through the town. No comma. Okay, if the adverb clause comes in the middle of the independent clause, then we use commas on both sides. All of my children, since they are grown, support themselves now. Okay, so we have commas on both sides to set apart that clause. Okay, so quick review. So if the um, subordinator comes first, then we're going to put a comma after the subordinating clause. Um, if we if it comes second, then we don't use a comma, and if it comes in the middle, then we use a comma on each side. Okay. Uh, the other thing about uh, prescriptive prescriptivism and subordination is that um, prescriptivists often say something like don't start a sentence with because or don't start a sentence with a subordinating conjunction, um, but it really isn't a hard rule there. Um, so we've seen several sentences where it seems to be fine to start a sentence with a subordinating conjunction. So why would we have such a prescription? Well, the prescription is really less about the subordinator than it is about the fact that if you don't, um, if you don't make sure it's attached with an independent clause, that it results in a sentence fragment. So it really should be more like a rule saying we shouldn't have sentence fragments, right? We should avoid sentence fragments. So um, you just want to make sure that when you're putting your clauses together that you don't leave an, a dependent clause all by itself with no independent clause, right? So each sentence needs to have an independent clause in order to be grammatically correct. Um, and that's pretty much it about adverbial clauses, okay? So you want to take a look again at the list of um, the subordinators, and those are the ones that start subordinating uh, clauses, and that's it.